Some Jews are driven by oi, others are driven by joy. And I'm clearly in the second category. Nonetheless, I believe that the Jewish community as we know it today is seriously at risk. Let me explain. We are fundamentally a tribal people. And I love that aspect of our Jewish identity. We have a rich history. We have a religion that has been passed down through the centuries. We feel a sense of connection to Jews all around the world. Our strong ties to the state of Israel owes to the fact that it is a nation reborn out of the ashes of the Shoah. Tribes, when they work well, are able to convey to their followers emotional ties that cross the centuries, cross the generations, and cross national boundaries. Jewish institutions that use Jewish tribal loyalty wisely use it to inspire and encourage a stronger Jewish identity. There is, however, a problem. And the problem is that the next generation of Jews, Gen X and the millennials, are stridently post-tribal. I know this not just because I read the surveys that tell us that it is so. I know it because for over 30 years, I've worked with young people in Jewish youth groups, summer camps, and for over 20 years as the founder and president of Panim, which touched the lives of tens of thousands of Jewish young people, inspiring them to lives of Jewish leadership, political activism, and service to the world, inspired by the teachings of Judaism and of Jewish values. I've come to call this next generation of Jews covenantal, as distinct from tribal, because they are deeply committed to the values that grow out of Torah and out of the rabbinic tradition. They need to buy the tribal package to advance those values in the world. For many of them, they've gotten way too much of the what is Judaism and way too little of the why is Judaism. There is, however, some good news. It is possible to take next-gen post-tribal Jews and get them to care about their Jewish identity and about their connection to the Jewish people. And to explain how, I want to tell you a story. Among my many hats, I'm the founding rabbi of a Dat Shalom Reconstructionist congregation in Bethesda, Maryland. In 2011, I was invited to, tr to travel to Haiti to work with a group of Israeli volunteers who had been on the ground in Haiti within weeks of the devastating earthquake. They were doing amazing work on the ground. In addition to teaching and working with the Israelis, I also did some work with local Haitians. My translator was a charismatic young minister named Johnny Felix. Pastor Johnny had founded a congregation, a church, in Leogon, right near the center of the earthquake, and also a kindergarten through sixth grade school. I was so inspired by his work that when I went back home, I told my stories, showed my pictures, and encouraged my congregation to start a fundraising campaign to support Pastor Johnny's new Christian school in Leogon. And within a few months, we raised enough money to support for at least five years, hopefully longer, underwriting teacher salaries at his school, buying computer equipment, and underwriting the $76 a year tuition that most of Pastor Johnny's families cannot afford. Within a couple of months, several members of, of my congregation came to me and said that they wanted to go to Haiti also. They wanted to do hands-on work and not just write a check. They asked me if I would lead the trip. I agreed, and so it was that last December, I and 18 members of Adat Shalom traveled to Leogon. The group was made up of 18 people equally divided between adults and their children between ages 15 and 30. During the day, we built houses side by side with Haitians, as you can see in the picture. These are Haitians who were living in wood huts with no indoor plumbing. At night, I led study sessions connecting the work we were doing during the day with the Jewish teachings about Sedek Umishpat, about how we must do justice in the world regardless of nationality, regardless of religion, regardless of race. Now, I've been teaching for a long time, and I could tell that the adults were far more into the study sessions than were the teens. Now, mind you, they were polite, but it was their rabbi filling some dead time in the evening. The important work was happening during the day. Typical of post-tribal Jews, their attitude was, what's Judaism got to do with it? And then on Sunday, we went to church, to Pastor Johnny's church. And suddenly, Judaism mattered a great deal. The church was in a tent with a dirt floor. There were about 100 people in the, in the congregation. They were sitting on cast off benches, dressed beautifully, and given their poverty, we were amazed at how beautifully they were dressed. When we entered the church, they had already been there for two hours when we got there for the last 90 minutes of the service. We were greeted by a Hebrew song, 
A Hebrew song that I had taught a year earlier when I visited that congregation, the song was Shabbat Shalom. It had become a regular part of their Sunday morning liturgy. Pastor Johnny had invited me to offer the morning sermon. Because we were there during the week of Hanukkah, I used the lessons of Hanukkah to bring hope and encouragement to Haitians who had not only been devastated by a natural disaster, but whose families had suffered for decades under corrupt dictators who more or less ruined their country. When our makeshift Adat Shalom choir got up to teach a few Hebrew songs, the congregation joined with passion to the words, Hinei matovu manayim, shevet achim gam yachad. How beautiful it is for us to sit here together in this tent. Sisters and brothers united in friendship and in unity. At the end of the service, I spontaneously got up and invited the entire congregation to stand and join arms around the perimeter of the tent. And I taught the Israeli song, Shalom Chaverim Lehitraot, as a way to say, we're not saying goodbye, we're saying until we meet again. It was a way for us to say to our Haitian friends that we as a spiritual, religious, Jewish community would not forget our new friends in Haiti. The service was transformational for us Jews. I could tell by seeing the tears welling up in the eyes of my congregants as we stood in that circle singing Shalom Chaverim. I could tell it by the comments I got over the next couple of days from members of my community. I also could tell because what they learned on that Sunday morning was that by being more compassionate human beings, they were becoming better Jews. And by being better Jews, they were becoming more compassionate human beings. The Haitians taught us that lesson. These Haitians were devout Christians. They were simple people, but beautiful souls. They had never met a Jew before. To them, we had walked out of the pages of the Bible. During the week, we were simply white folk with hammers. And suddenly, on Sunday morning, we were God's chosen people who had come to support them, their pastor, and to help build a school for their children to give them a hope of a better tomorrow. We were the children of Israel doing God's work, just as had been written in scripture. Being so honored by the Haitians for being Jewish, our teens came to realize the power of the Jewish tribal legacy, and they became very proud of being Jews. Over the next couple of days, I could tell the change in the attitude of our teenagers. Suddenly, they were asking me questions about the study sessions that they could care less about a few days earlier. There was one 17-year-old named Sophie, and Sophie said, Rabbi Sid, don't take offense, but I didn't really dig that study session stuff at the early part of the week. But when you got up and started preaching to those Haitians, using the lessons of Jewish history and of Hanukkah to bring them hope and encouragement, and they start yelling out, hallelujah, you got me too. When we got back home, I started seeing some of the teens coming to Shabbat morning services. Not a usual sight. It included Sophie. Other teens went to our religious school and told stories about what they had done in Haiti and encouraged the religious school to raise more money for a Haiti campaign. The teens came for the covenantal mission of helping poor people in need. Our teens are nothing if they're not altruistic. But in the course of the week, they came to connect their work in Haiti with the Jewish tribal legacy that dates back to the first encounter between God and Abraham in chapter 18 of Genesis. When God says to Abraham that your mission in the world as the first Jew is la sot tzedakah mishpat, to extend the boundaries of righteousness and justice in the world. And our young people began to own and be proud of that Jewish tribal legacy. What then is the formula for taking next-gen post-tribal Jews and making them care about Jewish engagement and Jewish identity. It is not nostalgia, nor will it be Jewish parents laying an extra heavy layer of guilt on their kids. And it isn't even continuity, which tells us a lot of what and very little of the why. To answer the why questions of Jewish life requires connecting our Jewish tribal story to its universal and covenantal lessons. Our trip provided answers to those often unasked why questions that so many of our Jewish institutions fail to address. It turns out that the answer to the why be Jewish question is the same as the answer to the question, why do we go to Haiti? Why? Because we are a people that have experienced again and again in our history 
the trajectory from slavery to freedom, me'avdut l'cheirut. Why? Because one of the most often repeated phrases in our liturgy is the phrase from Exodus, the ger lo tilchats, you shall not oppress a stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Why? Because as a people persecuted in virtually every generation and wherever we lived around the globe, we have raised up to a high level a principle that has become one of the fundamental principles of universal human rights, that every human being is made in the image of God, that Selim Elohim, and as a result, needs to be treated and accorded respect and dignity. These answers to those why questions tell us what we as Jews must do in the world. It raises Judaism up to another level beyond simply a body of religious customs and ceremonies. It inspires and motivates us as it has generations of Jews before us to understand that we are agents of healing and a world filled with persecution and suffering and pain and brokenness. That is what we must do in the world. So let us say to our children that by virtue of being members of the tribe we call the Jewish people, that we possess a sacred covenantal message to a world that desperately needs it. That, my friends, is the ticket to Jewish renaissance in America. Thank you. Mm -hmm.